Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Issue one, VIP, VP. Donald Trump has picked his vice presidential running mate. Enter Governor Mike Pence of Indiana, age 57, evangelical and married to Karen Pence. The governor has been chief executive of Indiana since 2013. Prior to that, Mr. Pence spent 12 years as member of the U.S. House of Representatives. The governor is well known for his conservative views on social issues and that some analysts say helps explain why Mr. Trump chose him. Is Pence a good pick, Pat? First, Pence's uh, name was put off, his nomination, if you will, was put off for a bit of time by Donald Trump because of this his horrendous atrocity in Nice, France, John. And that is probably more important, even than the Pence appointment in this sense, with the Black Lives Matter protest that ended in an atrocity in Dallas, and this abroad, the issue of law and order and security are rising to the surface, and that will decide this election, I think, more than Mr. Pence. But I will say this, Pence's choice by Trump is a conservative choice, it's a safe choice, he's non-controversial. I think it says to the country that uh, if the, this election is going to be won by Donald Trump, he's going to have to carry the hod himself, and he's the main cutting edge of a ticket, the, the second part of which is not all that cutting edge. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, Governor Pence is a solid choice. Uh, he, as I think Newt Gingrich said, he's he's uh, s grounded and more stable, more more of a normal type person, uh, and that's that's what balances uh, uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and he's very conservative on on social issues, which Trump needed to because uh, the the conservatives in the base, the social conservatives, really are wary of of Trump and his sort of. What, what they once called New York values. Uh, but I agree with Pat that uh, the, the ticket is going to be determined by Donald Trump, and he's been channeling Richard Nixon, calling himself the law and order uh, candidate. But all of these easy uh, declarations that we should declare war would actually play right into the hands of the, uh, of the ISIS uh, fanatics. That's exactly what they want. They want to show the world uh, that the West has declared war on them. So. Uh, a lot of uh, rhetoric uh, lies ahead, but uh, when they declare war, uh, let's see what that really means. I don't think it really means much anything beyond words. What should we expect at next week's GOP convention? Minor, medium, or major drama? I think we should expect quite major drama on the streets. Obviously, there's a lot of security concerns, but I agree with, with Pat that, that Pence is a safe pick, that he appeals to that social conservative element. I think it reflects the Trump campaign's belief that they have to double down on what they have in the sense that someone like Pence is not going to attract uh, independents who might otherwise go to Trump. Younger voters, uh, they've sort of ruled that out by this pick. But I do think the, the Nice attacks, because of Hillary Clinton's uh, association with President Obama's uh, counterterrorism strategy, and I would say that uh, there are direct links in terms of the inspiration that the ISIL has been able to have, uh, Trump benefits from that. And you know the tragedy is that as much as the emotion and the fear and the security issues rightly play a role in any election, uh, from both sides, from Hillary Clinton, from uh, Donald Trump, you know, the solutions to this problem. It is a war, but it's a war in terms of rot, rot in political Islam and specific counterterrorism threat. It's, it's more complicated than just emotion. Yeah, it's very true. And I think uh, uh, Pence is a good choice. He, he, re he represents the Republican establishment with which uh, 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 Trump has been uh, at war to a great deal. This shows the world that, that, yeah, I do know how to play ball as far as balancing out a ticket. And it's also someone who will not compete with Trump right, for the spotlight. Right, right. Very important. <laughs> right. uh, and uh, uh, there's, uh, but I think that uh, uh, you know, on the national security issue, I, I'm, rem I'm reminded Trump has always done well on, 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 in polling on economics and national security. But he reminds me of the old Middle East uh, 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 saying that uh, he, he never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Because right, right. uh, even, even this weekend, you know, maybe he would have done better to have gone ahead with his announcement on Saturday and, and, and been able to make a statement tied in with it. Nice as well. And, uh, yeah, he, he, he fell back on the old tweets. Yeah. And Trump has a way of, of stepping on his own message, et cetera. Well, you know, he so got, he's, he's been well, Hillary He got Clinton out of the way help. of this story, and I think he almost mm -hmm. had to. It was so enormous, this atrocity down there, right there on the 
promenade and Nice right there on the Mediterranean. I think he did the right things in holding this off at least just for 24 hours. It came, it's coming anyhow. So, yeah. but I do think I do think it when you say safe choice. Donald Trump is going to have to carry the ball on every play in yeah. this game. He doesn't but mind. He has, he has <laughs> been steering within the, 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 the lanes these last uh, couple of days, I, mm -hmm. which shows that he is capable of some self-discipline. I also think the choice of Pence uh, reveals the extraordinary power that his family has, and they're going to be showcased. They're going to be the main mm -hmm. features at the political mm -hmm. convention uh, next week, and they were urging uh, uh, mm -hmm. Pence, and so I, you know, I think they are they are the campaign. Mm -hmm. the, the, the vetters. <laughs> right. On next week's uh, GOP convention, there will be minor drama involving the GOP's never Trump faction. But the real story will be violent protests by progressives. The protests will energize and unify, <coughs> excuse me, the GOP. Issue two campaign evolution. to do everything I can to make certain she will be the next president of the United States. Bernie Sanders this week removed a huge obstacle from Hillary Clinton's path to the U.S. presidency. He endorsed Mrs. Clinton and ended his campaign. But Mr. Yes, Trump well, didn't folks, receive the same treatment from Bates. former competitor kind of Jeb similar, Bush. Mr. Trump's candidacy, Mr. Bush says, is a quote-unquote tragedy, and that's not all. There isn't going to be a wall built, and Mexico's not going to pay for it, and there's not going to be a ban on Muslims. I think people are going to really feel betrayed. Also this week, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg waded into the presidential race, telling the New York Times, quote, I can't imagine what the country would be with Donald Trump as our president. End quote. Mr. Trump responded fiercely, deriding Justice Ginsburg as, quote unquote, a disgrace to the court and that she should resign. Pat, what's going on? Well, with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I think Trump's initial comment was pretty close. He said, her mind is shot. And oh. <laughs> it was a pretty tough comment, but yeah. that's what he tweeted. Yeah. Let me say this. She has made a terrible mistake for herself. She's exposed all her beliefs. She said basically how she would vote on issues. I don't think she hurt Trump at all. She hurt the court. And if Trump, fra if Trump wins, frankly, she's going to have to resign from the court, in my judgment. Oh, please. Sure uh, she is. Those are lifetime appointments. Yeah. They don't have to resign simply because she offended mm -hmm. him. He offended her back. There's but nothing wrong with her brain. He ought to sit in on one of the oral arguments and watch this woman perform. She shouldn't have done what she did. She's apologized. But you know, a lot of people, what? Pat, think that Donald Trump is so outside the mainstream of what yeah. we should have then as a leader in this country that they so. feel that they have to speak she's out. She's revealed herself as a yeah. total politician making political say she's got a perfect right to do that, but not as a Supreme Court justice. She ought to go. Well, look, here's, here's the thing. It is, you know, there has been a tradition in recent years, and unfortunately the president has done it, and it was dis for a Harvard law professor when he went to the, uh, to the State of the Union address and called out the court, that attack on the co-equal system of government that we apply, Ginsburg should not have said this. It was outrageous. But I do think there is this problem that we have now with the judiciary on both sides, from right and left, there's this increasing belief that the Supreme Court has lost some of its way. And I personally, I, I'm, I'm very grateful that we have Justice Roberts as the Chief Justice, because I think he has held it together. Uh, I know a lot of conservatives very upset yeah, with some right. of these rulings. <laughs> but with the importance of the Supreme Court, the most powerful nation on earth, bound up with nine folks, well, eight at the moment, who have that absolute power to interpret the Constitution, there is something inherently positive there, and Ginsburg should have known better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but I winced when she said that, too, because it just obviously it just exposed, uh, it's just been, been, been a bit too obvious. Uh, I, I, nobody doubted Justice Scalia's politics, but right. you know, he didn't have to name right. uh, candidates and say this person's good, this person's she, bad, because you, you knew where his leanings were. She talked about decisions she wants to see overturned as soon yeah. as they come up to her. You well, can't I mean, you <laughs> talk about problem. a mindset predisposed, uh, she, that's not yeah. a judicial yeah, but, temperament. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but let, let, let's not pretend.
pretend that these people are totally above politics. They're, they're appointed by political leaders. They have definite views, and we have a very divided court. We have, it's four and four. You make a very good and, point. And, these and, judges. And she has not told us anything we didn't already okay, judges know. Judges should not <laughs> be making the decisions they're making in a democratic republic. They ought to be made by the voters and by the people they and elect, when, not judges. When Justice Question. Scalia went, uh, went, went duck hunting with uh, Mr. Cheney while a case involving Mr. Cheney was before the court, did you get all exercised about that? I think, well, didn't Cheney <laughs> lose? <laughs> Question, is the Jeb Bush attack on Trump sending voters to HRC? You know, uh, I think the Jeb Bush attack was, in a way, it was pathetic. It was poor Jeb. I tried my best and to do this and that. I don't think he helped himself. Jeb speaks for a lot of Republicans, and you look at the uh, convention next week and the number of delegates who are queasy about Donald Trump as their nominee, and you can see that uh, Jeb Bush spoke for a lot of people. You know, I, I think it's going to be net neutral. That Republicans such as myself already agree with uh, Jeb on those points, but Trump has his support, and it, it's irrelevant to Bush. Well, I mean, what do you think, John? Oh, I think definitely the uh, attack on Trump is going to send voters to the HRC. Mm -hmm. Well, but Jeb wishes that they, they, those voters would come to him, but he wasn't able to persuade them uh, in, in that direction either. I mean, what is the Republican Party these days? We're, we're learning that the party's more conservative than Jeb, Bu Jeb Bush. Bush. Sounds like sour grapes. He got clobbered. Yeah. And now he's knocking Trump. Well, he can't do this and well, that. Uh, uh, John North. Kasich got clobbered too. He only won one was, state. He's but in somewhat poll, silent. excuse me, but in polls he leads Hillary Clinton in battleground states. So what? There's a lot. There's a lot of buyer's remorse in the Republican Party about yeah. Trump. Yeah, that is true. What about oh, Sanders and Dorsman? Sanders and Dorsman was. He said, "I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton." It didn't sound to me wildly enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you, maybe I missed something. No, he's he's, he's going to be out on the they're campaign trail. He's he, 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 yeah, he's going to uh, be out there. Uh, yeah, he's going to he's going to help her, <laughs> but but uh, I think uh, uh, he, he's also trying to help himself. His speech yeah. uh, was really pitching for the Bernie Sanders party. He's still uh, 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 an, an independent who's who's under the Democratic banner right now and he's trying to establish a movement here right. and, and that's very What obvious. is his key and this right. is the interesting juxtaposition with Pence who will you know alienate younger voters although Trump you know they weren't going for Trump anyway Bernie can absolutely gravitate them towards Hillary that is the critical factor okay. and that right. I think will and be his world be on the campaign trail all the Democratic superheroes will be out there Pat. <laughs> it's going to be like Teddy Kennedy walking around that stage with Carter running around trying oh, to shake I don't hands. Think no, so. That's the one yeah. thing they don't want to have no, happen that again. Won't happen. That <laughs> won't happen. That won't happen. If Trump Trump wins, should the notorious RBG recuse herself from any case in which the Trump administration files a brief? No, no, she yes should do no? the no. She should do the right thing and simply resign. She's 83 <laughs> years old. No, no, no resign, uh, no recusal. As long Just as her brain, as long as her no. brain is functioning, she's fine. She's not going to recuse herself. Uh, no, I think she, she may recuse herself on, on, on uh, one issue here and there, but she's not required to, and uh, she would have to be impeached by Congress in order to leave that seat, and I think right. that's a good thing, because I don't want her to leave. Right, exactly. <laughs> issue three, Trump's veteran plan. Every veteran will get timely access to top quality medical care. Donald Trump this week released a 10-point plan for veterans. It includes proposals to allow veterans to use private medical care paid for by the federal government, if so desired. Mr. Trump will also establish a commission to investigate failures at the Veterans Affairs Administration and will establish a manned 24-hour White House hotline for veterans' complaints. The announcements come weeks after some veterans groups strongly condemned Mr. Trump. Question, will Trump's plan improve health care for veterans? Yes or no? Uh, look, I think he he's, clearly he's going to make an effort. This is a very strong political issue he's got. I think he's going to give it everything he's got. But this is a tremendously big problem. It's bureaucratic. And eat, but what it does need is really energy in the executives. I think he'll do that. 
Whether it'll make a great difference, I don't know, but it's something behind which every American will get. Well, except for the hotline that's actually going to be manned 24 hours. I didn't hear anything new. Mm -hmm. You know, John McCain and Bernie Sanders uh, co-authored uh, legislation that allows uh, veterans, if they are, uh, have, have to wait for an appointment, they can use private care. So that's already uh, been done. Uh, and so I, I, you know, I, I I think the Veterans Department is overwhelmed with the numbers and the severity of the uh, wounds coming out of these very long wars. And so, uh, you know, I, he's going to appoint a commission. I think we've already had a commission looking into various things that are wrong. So uh, I don't think he's got a magic wand. Yeah, I mean, look, I think a lot of the proposals, they're not new, and Trump has used veterans as partisan tools. His comments about John, John McCain and the POW. Uh, remain one of the most disgusting comments in American political history, I think, in terms of tradition of national service. But I would say ultimately veterans affairs is one of the great unifying issues in this campaign in the sense that ultimately people are aware that it is a critical issue. Two things we could do. Number one, one of the challenges with VA expand, making it easier for people to get benefits more quickly and seek medical treatment, uh, there's increasing amount of fraud. So we should have you know, more resourcing there to put people in prison who are stealing that money. Um, but at the same time, look, po post-traumatic stress, TBI, all these things are now on the radar. They are a public concern. People want to invest in it on both sides. That's positive. I thought it was a good speech, and it was a good speech when Obama delivered it, too. I, I think, uh, I mean, the fact is, is uh, I, I wondered who, who, who wrote it for Trump, because uh, it really uh, gave a good diagnosis of problems at the VA, problems we, we're aware of, and diagnoses we've heard before. Where's, where's the money, I want to know, uh, because that's what, what uh, this requires. It, it is a huge bureaucracy. And uh, the Defense Department's health care is excellent, uh, but then when, they're, when, when uh, the uh, patients are turned over to the VA system, that's where they run into problems. And, and, and this varies around different parts of the country. Uh, so I, I think it, it's, a, it's a good issue. Uh, can I trust Donald Trump to be able to deliver on it? I don't know. We're still have, having questions about the money he allegedly raised for veterans' charities here weeks ago. Uh, so uh, it's uh, good politics. Exit question. Will Trump's proposals fix the VA health system? Yes he's or no? He's got to be elected first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't think he's going to get reelected, though, no, a double no. Even if he does get elected, I don't see how he fixes it. <laughs> it's, it's a huge bureaucracy. Government, you know, inherently that's that's problem bureaucracy, but things are getting better slowly but surely. It's an ongoing challenge. Every, everybody wants to fix the VA, but it's huge, it's expensive, and it's complicated. But, uh, uh, I mean, Trump's, Trump's on, on the right track, so is Hillary. What's the big problem, though? Well, the big problem is patient delivery. I mean, Trump ran it down quite well that, uh, you know, depending on who your counselor is as a VA patient, uh, you can get really good service or really terrible service, and you, and you may sit and wait for weeks and die before you get to the hospital. Uh, th th this is a very serious problem that has to be dealt with. Let's move on. Veteran suicide. After four years of research in all 50 states, the Veterans Affairs Administration has released a new report on veteran suicides. According to the VA, 20 veterans commit suicide every day. Question. Michael Xavier Johnson, the veteran responsible for the recent police shooting, the one killed by a robot, what did his parents say about him after serving in Afghanistan? Well, look, the, the, the concern that people have about returners from Afghanistan and Iraq and, and previous conflicts where there was not enough attention given to post-traumatic stress is that some people will come back uh, being wounded mentally and they require that treatment. Things are improving, but, you know, the veteran suicide, I think, 20 a day, yeah. it's a key problem. They Start said he came veteran. back, they sa sh the parents said he came back different. Yeah, right. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't imagine I, that Everyone comes back different. But to you some know, the way. suicide, sui there was a Harvard study recently among white working class folks moving up toward their 40s opioids and, and, and suicides and other things like the alcoholism are increasingly a cause of a growing number of suicides and, and deaths mm. of these folks. So something's wrong in the society Collapse and the certainly, family. certainly, well, certainly even with, with vets, it's especially severe because of what yeah. they've been through. Well, Absolutely. You hear this from many people that, that, that their loved one didn't come back the same. And uh, we need to be able to have the kind of health care supports that are going to help Well, and folks. the pharmaceuticals have finally come to some kind of agreement where they're not going to keep pushing these opioids out there as right. though they're candy without any and, harmless and a lot of these, uh, after effects. A lot of these effects. vets have been over there two, three, four uh, deployments. Oh, yeah. 
That's right. And I, part of this, I think, it, one of the increasing things that psychologists or political psychologists are writing about is the, this idea of that the, the collapse of or the collapsing society into you know absent personal connections, the loss right. of family. Uh, that Ball you know the internet, right? This Pokemon game is a, a, a silly example, but also a true example of Adam, how atomization uh, uh, and right, deracination. Right right, 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 right. Issue four: Islands in the dark. The Philippines strongly affirms its respect for this milestone decision as an important contribution to ongoing efforts in addressing disputes in the South China Sea. China was rebuked this week when the Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled for the Philippines on issues of sovereignty in the South China Sea. The International Tribunal, based in The Hague in the Netherlands, ruled that China is not entitled to territorial sovereignty claims via its artificial islands. The court also rebuked China for causing, quote, severe harm to the coral reef environment, unquote. Still, while the Philippines celebrated, China was less than conciliatory. President Xi Jinping stated, quote, unquote, China's territorial sovereignty and marine rights in the South China Sea will not be affected. And as China continues to build military capabilities on islands across the South and East China Seas, the potential for conflict seems to grow. Question, what happens next? Pat. Scarborough Shoal is something you're going to hear about, John. The Chinese claim it. It's about 120 miles off the coast of the Philippines. It's in Philippines territorial water or economic zone, 200 mile zone. And the Chinese, if they start to militarize it the way they have these other reefs and rocks and other things, they're not islands, but reefs and rocks. If they do that, they're going to have a re they're going to be in a collision certainly with the Philippines and all the other states in that border on the South China Sea. Now, if they start doing that, they'll throw down the gauntlet. The question then is what the Americans do. There's some hawks, American hawks, say we ought to confront them militarily and the rest of it. I don't agree at all. I think if, if the Chinese do that, we ought to let them take the diplomatic onus of that and start imposing economic sanctions. A 5% tariff on Chinese goods coming into this country would be a real way to strike them without getting our guys in a war with China. Those are not our islands. We shouldn't have to fight over those rocks and reefs. And, but we should be leading, I think, in the effort to make sure that, uh, that the, you know, justice is done according to the, uh, the traditions that, uh, that the court uh, imposed. Well, what happens next? <laughs> I think nothing for a while. Uh, the Philippines people there, they were joyous, they were celebrating until they realized that the Chinese simply were not going to pay any attention. But that's what the Chinese are saying publicly. Uh, maybe this will have a chilling effect. So I think it's the old wait and see. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I agree with you, we don't want to go to war over a bunch of rocks in the, in the sea. It, it, the difficulty that we have, though, is that there's a, you know, 50% of global trade is passing through these routes. And one of the positive things that is happening now is that in terms of countering the Chinese in a way that reduces the risk to our people in terms of putting ships there, is putting missile platforms that can essentially deny the Chinese access coming through. Mm -hmm. But I think we, we want to do more of a show of force in terms of, for example, Virginia-class submarines, which the Chinese are the aircraft, our aircraft carriers are now vulnerable, but the submarines, you put them up there and start doing photo shoots with them popping out the surface, that has some deterrent effect. But to some degree, you know, I agree with Pat in the sense that Chinese, the sense of, um, in a very similar to way to the Russians post-Cold War, this sense of embarrassment about how the West treated them in the 20th century, it's about managing that in, in, in a calculated way. Yeah, I agree with Pat so much here, it frightens me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't reassessed my position, though. I think, uh, first of all, yeah, there's not much going to happen for a while, but economic sanctions is definitely the way to go. And China is, is vulnerable because their economy has been uh, suffering some problems here recently. We know there's a huge bubble. They know that they've got a big bubble. They can't uh, afford to poke it. But they're also probably the, uh, one of the most paranoid countries right. on the planet. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they, as strong and big as they are, they are worried about uh, mm -hmm. uh, about their, their defenses, and they feel like these islands are a critical part of their Nobody's defense. Nobody's on their side in this dispute. Yeah. Right. What we've established here is China is creating a crisis whereby the Hague 
verdict will have to be backed up by force. Mm. Skilled diplomacy is needed to help Xi back down. Ask the question, will Xi Jinping continue to press China's territorial claims? Or will Xi back be, down? I think there's going to be a pause in activity in the South China Sea. Yeah, that's what I think. I think this will have a chilling effect and everybody backs off for a time. Uh, one of the challenges that we face is that the Chinese have been very clever in terms of buying allies like Britain uh, and other actors, the Indians perhaps as well, into the Asia Investment Infrastructure Bank. That limits our diplomatic power. The, the money, money <coughs> talks. Quite, quite right. And, and we have, uh, have uh, gotten the Chinese addicted to capitalism, state capitalism, but yeah. <laughs> nevertheless, they, they do like making money and not losing it. And so uh, I think uh, sanctions, economic pressures can have a good impact. Prediction, Pat. The atrocities in Nice and Dallas will really cause security and, and domestic terrorism, foreign terrorism be the issue. Hillary Clinton will move to the right. She already has begun. She was on uh, Bill O'Reilly the other night. Hello. Uh, there are votes that, that people watch Fox too, Pat. <laughs> the long-awaited release of the 28 pages from a congressional report after the 9-11 attacks will shed important new light on Saudi government involvement in those attacks. Because, oh. because of the uh, children who were killed in the atrocity in Nice, uh, the French response will be very vigorous and probably will involve special operations force escalation in Syria. And the motto there, uh, to borrow the Marie Antoinette line, will be qu'il mange uh, de l'amour and uh, good. <laughs> Clarence. Uh, Mike Pence's parents grew up in Chicago. I expect to see an incursion of uh, Republican campaigners into Illinois, but it's going to be a, a tough swing to make. <laughs> I predict President Obama's approval rating, now down to an anemic 48%, will continue to fall throughout what's left of his term. Now, we at the McLaughlin Group send our very deepest condolences to the people of France and to all those who are suffering in the aftermath of Thursday's attack in Nice. Vive la France. Bye-bye. <laughs>